African proverb states that those who know the truth must teach our ancestors demand this of us. The real matrix is not science fiction. The real matrix is the false illusory worldview grafted upon us from birth through the white society's monopoly over information that they've imposed upon us, thus causing our collective minds to perceive a false version of reality that would then function based upon. It's what's known as the illusionary truth effect. The illusionary truth effect is when people are made to believe that false information is true by repeated exposure to the false information and then begins functioning based upon the false information rather than the true reality. I never said that what I teach would be easy for all to comprehend. I only said that it would be the black liberating truth. The truth that white oppressive forces don't want us to ever learn because it's the truth that sets our minds free from white mental slavery. In order to free our minds from the black people's matrix, you have to learn of the true hidden nefarious social science tactics that white oppressive forces secretly deploys in order to facilitate their long-term oppression of black people. All societies function based upon the narratives that are fed into them. Because the white society controls all the narrative, they systematically feed false narratives into society that serve the system of white supremacy. The narratives fed into the white dominant society are distorted to falsely exalt whites and to falsely marginalize black people. It's a nefarious social science tactic that creates and sustains false assumptions within the society that aids in maintaining white social dominance over black people. Now here's a simplified version of what I just said. The white society's greatest power is that they create the narratives that millions believe and then function based upon. And embedded within those narratives are lies that are designed to make millions of people function in ways benefiting the system of white supremacy. The white society sits upon a throne of white exalting lies, lies that empowers them. Case, point, and proof. Uh, the white society miseducates us to believe that the world's first scholars originated in ancient Greece. However, the Greeks openly admitted that their knowledge originated from African scholars. When Socrates wrote of, of his studies in the book Busiris, he said that I study philosophy and medicine in Africa's Egypt. The white society also miseducates us to believe that the father of medicine was a Greek named Hippocrates. However, the true father of medicine was an African named Imhotep. Imhotep was practicing medicine and writing on the subject over 2000 years before Hippocrates was even born. And although Egypt is located in Africa, and although carbon date testings have scientifically proven that the ancient kingdom was built by Africans thousands of years long before the arrival of the Greeks and Arabs during the seventh century, the white society nonetheless miseducates us to believe that Africa's ancient Egyptians were ridiculously Europeans. However, DNA analysis have scientifically proven that Africa's ancient Egyptians were in fact Africans. In December um, 2012, DNA testings were conducted on the mummies of Pharaoh Ramsey III, his son, and many others by DNA Tribes, an American company which specializes in conducting DNA tests. Their DNA testing proved that they belonged to the human Y chromosome group E1BLA. Uh, this is the Y chromosome group of sub-Saharan Africans. In 2012, another group of mummies were also tested by DNA Tribes from the Amana period of Egyptian pharaohs. The conclusion of those testings were that those mummies' DNA were consistent with the present-day population of Africa's Great Lakes region of Southern Africa. These results were published in the DNA Tribes Digest in February 2013. The White Society also miseducates us to believe that Africans were illiterate and uncivilized before the Europeans invaded. The hidden reality is that the world's oldest university, manuscript, encyclopedia, human prosthetic, mathematical tool, medical journal, and oldest ancient man-made structures are all found in Africa. Africans are also the first people to build in stone and smelt metal. The world's largest wall is not the Great Wall in China. It's actually Africa's Great Wall in Benin, located in Nigeria. It's four times larger than the Great Wall of China. Furthermore, Long before the Europeans invaded Africa, it was Africans, when we call ourselves Moors, that civilized Europe. Africans introduced science, writing, math, philosophy, and even hygiene standards, including the daily bath, to Europeans. 
Queen Isabella of Spain bragged that she had only bathed twice in her entire lifetime. Queen Elizabeth I claimed that she was the cleanest woman in all of Europe for reportedly bathing once a month. This non-bathing practice ended only after Africans introduced the daily bath to Europeans. The White Society also depicts himself as being the highest evolved Homo sapiens, while depicting we Africans as being the lowest evolved Homo sapiens. They portray us as being closer to apes. However, the truth is the exact opposite from what they've manipulated so many people to believe. It's been scientifically proven that Africans are the true Homo sapiens. African chocolate colored melanin skin and woolly black hair are have been scientifically proven as being the direct result of Homo sapien DNA. While ca Caucasians pink skin and long animalistic hair have been scientifically proven as being the result of Neanderthal DNA. The white society also miseducates us to believe that Thomas Edison is responsible for lighting up the entire world. The hidden reality is that after Edison patented his light bulbs, no companies purchased nor mass produced it. This is because it was deemed not efficient enough for mass production. It lit very dimly and lasted only a few minutes. The inventor whose light bulb was, was purchased, mass produced, and spread throughout the world um, was an inventor, an African American inventor named Louis Latimer. He sold a patent to the U.S. Electric Company in 1881. He was also dispatched around the world to overseas installation. Therefore, in reality, it was actually a black man that lit up the entire world. The white society systematically distorts many facts to falsely give themselves credit for most inventions made by black people. In doing so, they've created the perception that Caucasians are responsible for most inventions that have revolutionized the world. Moreover, that black people are the leeches of society that haven't embedded much throughout history. Creating this perception greatly aids the white society in maintaining its social dominance over black people. However, the hidden reality is that in spite of cultural traumas wrought by the injustice of white racism and slavery, most inventions that have revolutionized the world were either in fact invented by black people or were directly inspired by early inventions by black people. When a well-packaged web of lies had been sold gradually to the masses over generations, the truth will seem utterly preposterous and is speaker a raving lunatic. But I'm speaking the truth. Because the white society controls all of the societal narratives, they therefore literally owns the interpretation of reality. They've exploited this immense position of power to whitewash the perception of reality itself. They do so because we are functioning based upon their false narratives that exhausts themselves and marginalizes us. Doing so creates a perception that produces um, false assumptions within the society that aids in maintaining white social dominance over black people. Through this nefarious practice, the collective self-esteem of the white masses uh, has been falsely bolstered at the expense of the collective self-esteem of the black masses. According to white social scientists, perception is more important than reality for controlling and steering society because people function based upon their perceptions of what's true rather than what actually is true. Therefore, white propagandists feeds false, white exalting information into society that creates and sustains the perception that white is superior. Our society then functions based upon that false perception. Through this process, the white society has literally whitewashed the perception of reality itself. Those of us who don't critically think never notice our mental change. We have to understand that there is a system in place for maintaining white dominance. The white society may publicly profess equality for all, but they are unrelenting committed to the preservation of their white dominance. They've convinced us to believe that we are the dreads of society by giving, keeping our narratives negative. They have us believe that most welfare recipients are black in America, but in reality, most welfare recipients are Caucasian women. They have us believe that we're the ones um, benefiting from affirmative action when the largest benefactor of affirmative action are white women. They have us believe that we commit most violent crimes when the truth is most violent crimes are created are committed by white males. The white society is also more likely to engage um, or engage into um, with, to kill a to family member for financial gain. The white society are also um, the group more likely to commit patricide, the matricide, that's the killing of parents. You know, the, the white society is falsely scripted. According to social science, in order for a dominant group to maintain their position of dominance, the narratives fed into a society must uh, endorse that position of dominance.
Okay. Uh, so therefore, the narrow fed into a society exalts whites. This is why you never hear nothing negative about whites. Nothing negative about whites. It's a social science. And that's why I think, critically think, you know, see how cartoonishly unrealistic it is that all information we receive about ourselves are negative. What it's doing, it, it, it instills feelings of, of inferiority into our minds, which makes us more compliant with white dominance over our life. It also sustains false assumptions within the society that aids in maintaining white dominance over black people. We have to elevate our minds above a biblical fairy tale and a silly slave syndrome myth. The ruling elites, the social science, they're laughing when they see millions of black people saying Jesus is going to save us. They're laughing when they see black people saying it's the Willie Lynch myth. How do we overcome the Willie Lynch chip? Black ignorance is the white oppressor's greatest power. This is why those who know the truth must teach. There are social sciences that are being used for maintaining white dominance and to facilitate the white side's long-term oppression of black people. The reason why they keep us believing uh, that we are our worst enemies is because social scientists discovered that, when it, that while the white society using their, exploiting their weaponry advantage of guns and cannons were able to enslave and bring Africans to America, they're not able to sustain peace with us indefinitely unless they manipulate our minds. Because what happens is whenever people are oppressed for long term, their collective aggressions will continue to grow until acts of retribution and rebellion becomes inevitable. It is an inherent response within the human condition under the long term oppression. People always eventually rebel. Because so to pre prevent this, you have to shift the collective aggressions of the oppressed away from the oppressors and redirect it against themselves. And this is why the white society bombards with the propaganda about blacks killing blacks, blacks killing blacks. It is designed to keep us believing that we are our worst enemies, which keeps our collective aggression shifted away from the white society and redirected towards us. Now, I know this is a lot, but it's a social science. There are tactics that are being used for maintaining white dominance. You know, when you buy a car and you have a manual and you, you follow the manual on, so you can keep the car running as long as possible. There's a manual for maintaining dominance. And the white society follows that manual to keep white dominance going as long as they can. Welcome to the real world. One love and peace, brothers and sisters. Those who know must teach.